people watching car views on the other side of a screen. It's your favorite car color coordinated Sarah here with another truck review. Today I have the all new 2022 Toyota Tundra Capstone. Today I'm gonna get this essentially Lexus pickup truck up in the air. We're gonna nerd out in the tech specs, see how it's constructed, then go give it the beans and take it out in the dirt. Big, long, heavy truck. All right, let's take a look underneath. Look at the size of the tip on this thing. Hey, it's got one of those steps too. I like these. First up, this one is equipped with the tow package and will tow 10,340 pounds, which is pretty good for a twin turbo V6. This many kilograms. Up above my head is a black steely for the spare. I personally think one of these on some steelies would look good. Out back, you got a solid rear axle with a electronic locking rear diff and a 3.31 final drive ratio. No leaf springs, cause it's a multi-link rear end, no pan hard bar, but it does have adaptive suspension, which we'll get to a little bit more in a little bit. But first I gotta measure this rear anti-sway bar, which comes in at just over 27 millimeters. Whoa, that's pretty rad. It says Hino Motors on the rear diff. Their HD company. The 2022 Tundra has a fully boxed frame, hydraulic cab mounts. The capstone edition doesn't really have too many skid plates underneath here, even though it is a four x four. And it weighs in at approximately 6,185 pounds, which is this many kilograms. Seriously, how long is this fuel tank? This is ridiculous. I have to measure this. This is so crazy. Are you serious? That's a seven foot, five inch long fuel tank or 226 millimeters. That is huge. Same with the drive shaft. I can't even get my hand around it. That's what she said. Now this one is four wheel drive and Toyota utilizes a Borg Warner two speed transfer case. Removable cross member. As far as the transmission goes, you only have one option with this drivetrain and it has a, a metal transmission pan instead of plastic. That's nice. But it is sourced from Iason. It is the AWR 10L65 10 speed direct shift automatic. And the shifts on this thing are actually pretty fast too. They're in 0.22 of a second. It has a maximum rated torque capacity of 650 Newton meters, which is about 478 ish pound feet. So right here is where the actual transmission itself ends. From here up to where this hardware is right there, this is your actual hybrid drive system that's sandwiched between the transmission and the engine. The entire exhaust system is stainless, which is a plus, but these catted downpipes actually look fairly restrictive for those interested in making more power. You can see they're pretty tiny and they're really stuffed up in the side of this engine, especially on the driver's side with this front drive shaft going through here. The front axle and diff are super accessible though. Same with the steering rack. That's not too, too bad to get to. Up front, you got a double wishbone suspension. This lower wishbone is completely boxed all the way around. Both upper and lower are steel. Knuckle is aluminum. Absolutely massive ball joints, as well as the front anti-sway bar, which measures in at 42 millimeters. That is the largest front anti-sway bar I've ever measured on any vehicle, I think. Cute skid plate, Toyota. Whose goat did you shave to make this thing? All right, time for the braking test. Nobody behind me? Ready? Oh, geez. Wow, that was so soft. Pretty good stopping distance too. That was so less drama than I thought it was going to be. I was like bracing for it and I was just like, hmm. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a set of 353 millimeter or 13.9 inch front rotors with a four piston caliper. The wheels, they are a 22 by eight part of the capstone package. And uh, they have plastic inserts. Are you serious? That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> They're wrapped in a set of 265 
50 22 inch Bridgestone Dueler HT tires, which we'll see how these do off road. Out back, you have a 345 millimeter or a 13.6 inch rear rotor, and the wheel tire, same as you get up front. So these right here that look like rock sliders on the side of the truck are actually robotic steps that come down. And they're actually pretty solid. In the name of science, it is now time to give this thing the partial E-beams. Partial because it's hybrid. Bolstering assessment. Ow. The seats though, I like the two-tone, black and white. They're ventilated and heat-elated as well. Same with the steering wheel and it has heated and ventilated seats in the rear. Speaker and a tweeter. That's pretty sweet. USB, USB-C, power inverter. What is under here? Fuse. Hybrid stuff. Do these fold forward? Yep, oh, there's some storage back there. Babies can drop anchor. Drive mode wise, I have a little selector in the center here. Can rotate that and it goes from eco to comfort to normal. Sport S, Sport S Plus. And you can see the stuff turning blue, that's what it's changing. And then go to custom and you can configure each one of those things, your engine, your steering, and your adaptive suspension. I'm going to keep it in Sport S Plus. Turn off traction control. I'll give it a little assistance and let it eat. Ready? Go. There you go. Ooh, a little bit of hesitation. Maybe it didn't like the assist. This thing's so smooth. That's good. Whoa, this thing picks up speed a lot quicker than you'd think. <laughs> this thing's kind of quick. Wood pop. I wonder if these are functional. Uh, I don't think so. It's all it opens? Well, at least it's got hood struts. Underneath the hood of this iForce Max powered hybrid Tundra is the Victor 35 Alpha Dash Foxtrot Tango Sierra, which is a 3.4 liter Toyota. I'm sorry, but you can't round 3,444 cc's up to 3.5 liters. It's 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 that produces 437 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 583 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM. In case you didn't know, orange is a robot's favorite color, and that's why typically cables are orange on hybrid and electric vehicles. Now, the iForce Max hybrid system on its own, which runs parallel with the engine between the transmission, like I showed you earlier, produces 48 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque on its own. It has a 288 volt or 1.87 gigawatts <laughs> kilowatt hour of battery. Let's see if we can get a better look at this engine by removing the engine cover. Ooh, I like how it's got the iForce Max logo glossy on the top. There you go. You can see the air to water charge cooler right there on the top center of the engine. Digging in a little bit deeper on this engine itself, it has an aluminum block and head. It's an open deck block, but it does have cast iron cylinder liners in 85.5 by 100 millimeter bore and stroke and a 10.4 to one compression ratio. As far as the heads go, it is dual overhead cam, has Toyota's VVT-I, which stands for intelligent variable valve timing on both intake and exhaust, as well as D4ST, which is Toyota's direct and port fuel injection. So you don't have to worry about carbon deposits on the back of your intake valves. Engine cover, you go on like right there. Do you believe? Yep, solid, okay. Much like myself, this truck has the wrong shoes for the type of terrain that I'm on right now, but I wanna do a little bit of off-roading of this truck just to see if it is still capable with all this little exercising. Now there's a button right here on the dash that allows me to raise the ass end of the truck. It does have air bladders back there. Uh, it doesn't raise the entire truck though, but anything helps off-road. This truck technically has less ground clearance than a Subaru Crosstrek. It's eight and a half inches, Crosstrek's 8.7, and that has a way shorter wheelbase than this. So I don't even know if I'm gonna tackle my hill climb test, especially not on these wheels. Hey, look at this, a gravel pit. 
will it do it in two-wheel drive? It will not. <laughs> All right, so I gotta put it in four-wheel drive. Just learned a lesson. If tiny pebbles get stuck in these running boards, they won't retract. So definitely turn those off if you're going off-roading. Well, let's see if I can make it out on 22s. Beast! Beast mode pickup truck. It'll still do it! Let's try a little rally special stage with this thing, see how it maneuvers. I already know it's got an abysmal turning radius on asphalt. I got it in four high, and uh, let's eat. Get it! Oh, this is a big truck. So much torque. Wow. I am really surprised at these tires right now. This is, this is actually super, the ass end comes out a little bit on it too. Super controllable off-road. Oh man, instant, instant torque. Like no lag or delay in four high. Yeah! It let me really get sideways that time. I've had so many trucks understeer on that corner right there, and this thing has oversteer there. And usually Toyota is really big on their nanny systems, not letting you have fun, but it's, uh, it's definitely letting me have some fun. We'll do one hill climb and it's an intermediate one. It's really steep and slick and it's got a pretty big dip right there I got to avoid, but that's about it. We use four high. This thing's got 21 degrees of approach and 24 departure, so not a lot. It's a long truck. Climbing it like a mountain goat. <laughs> yeah. Trail cam came on automatically. That's good. Back when I did the Tundra launch event, I drove the 1794 edition that didn't have the hybrid drivetrain. And that one, I have to say, is pretty damn fast and it didn't feel much slower than the hybrid version. Also, fuel economy on this hybrid version varies wildly depending on your driving style. Now, if you hyper mile this thing, I was able to eke out 23 miles per gallon of just kind of back road driving. However, most of the time I was achieving around 17 and a half to 18 miles per gallon, which is a little less than what this thing is rated. So it depends on the owner of this truck of what you're going to see for your fuel economy. I think for most people, they'll be about at the low end of what this is rated for. Where this truck really shines though is definitely the interior. It's absolutely gorgeous in here. I love the ambient lights where it glows capstone on the dashboard at nighttime. It does have heads up display, which is pretty nice. The sound system is decent. Hidden cup holders. Do you open? You do, that's cute. Ah, more USBs. Wireless charge pad that lets you see your phone while it's charging. The infotainment screen is massive, has navigation, fruit and robot compatibility, but there's no real like hidden Easter egg features in here that are fun. All in all, I really like this new generation of Tundra and I would love to get a chance to review an SR base model 4x4 if one ever pops up for you guys. That's my jam. It is now time to give this thing some scores. And if you've never seen one of my reviews before, I have a one to five scale, one being the worst, five being the best. First up is the bean score. It's an assessment on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this Tundra with the iForce Max hybrid system is getting a rating of do to do. Next is the cookie score is an assessment on what you get for what you spend. And this capstone edition at just over $77,000 is getting a rating of do do. Next is the wrench score. It is a assessment of how much of an ass pain something would be to work on the low end of the score being the worst. And this Tundra is getting a rating of <laughs> doo doo. Next is the meatball score. It's assessment of a truck's off-road capabilities. 
And this 2022 Toyota Tundra Capstone 4x4 is getting a rating of, I forgot my big pointer finger. <laughs> Lastly is the Penguin Score. It's an assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle. And this truck right here, as it is equipped, is getting a rating of, I do like this new generation of Tundra, but I'm basic. Like, just give me an SR 4x4 with no options added to it and let me customize it the way it is. And for the price that the SR 4x4 starts at, it's not bad. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.